Hello everyone, it's Total here and I hope you've had a wonderful new year. Now please forgive my croaky voice, as you probably know from the statuses, I'm a little bit ill and have been for the past two weeks. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about why you might want a server, and more importantly, how to set up a dedicated server. So if you do find this video helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up. So jumping into it, a dedicated server put simply is a space on a dedicated system that is committed to running whatever game you install. For a lot of us that's satisfactory, but there are plenty of games available to install on dedicated servers, for example Valheim, or in the future I'm hoping to set up a Sons of the Forest server. Because it's a dedicated system, it primarily allows anyone to join the server regardless of needing a host in-game at the time and it also gives us better performance. For example, I mentioned previously that playing on a dedicated system doubled my FPS on a large save from 20 up to 40. Another perk is you can also run the server 24 seven without needing to be on it yourself, or if you don't want that, you can just run it when people are online. Those are op options for you. There are a few downsides, of course. So mods are currently not supported and there are a few bugs, such as the odd convey about being placed in the wrong direction. But all in all, servers are pretty stable. Now, depending on your expertise and the resources that you have available, you can set up your own home-based dedicated server or run a multiplayer game 24-7 on a separate PC or laptop that you may have lying around. But that would require you to have a second PC, a second copy of the game, and be willing to pay electricity 24-7 and have to fix any game problems that you have yourself. Alternatively, you can purchase a dedicated server online and have it all automated once it's set up. Now, prices for these services generally start around the 10 to 15 pound mark, or I'd say that's what, $14 to $20 mark, but they do scale up in price according to your needs and you get what you pay for. For example, if you're like me and want to run multiple servers for your community, you may want a dedicated box. This is a whole system dedicated to running games specifically for you. This is much more expensive, but allows me to run multiple servers, such as my Patreon servers, as well as future event servers, and my own server for when I'm streaming or trying to do the big fan factory builds. Now, the server provider that I'm with is Low.ms, and having run my servers with them for the past month, I can say that I'm very happy with how they've run and also how quick they were to help me with any issues that I had. Remember, I am a technophobe. Now, a few people have gotten servers and been a little bit confused as to how to set them up. So I'm going to show you how to set up the servers both on the back end and then in game for satisfactory. And if at the end you want to get your own server, use my link, which I'll post in the description. It'll give a little kickback to the channel, but also by using the code Total Eclipse at the checkout, you'll also get 20% off your first month which isn't bad. Now we're going to go through the whole process, but if you have a dedicated box like myself, there is a step more to do. So we're going to go through the whole um, process, but if you have just purchased a game server, you're going to, to need to skip the first uh, section. But once you've purchased your game server, whether that's the, the game server or the dedicated server, you can go over to your control panel. Now I am going to hide away some of my personal information, but you should be able to work out what you need to do from here. So once we're on the, the control panel, we're going to go across to create a service. And from here, we can select our server, which will be in this uh, list here. And from here, it's going to load up your server and you'll be able to select what game you want to be uh, playing for this server. Now we're going to go straight down to satisfactory and uh, then you have some other options. Uh, for example, we can change the host name to satisfactory server multiplayer. 
you can also change the priority. Um, so this depends on how many servers you're running. Maybe you want to add more priority to this one. If it's my own personal one for while I'm streaming, I'd obviously want to have that as real time or high priority versus the others. So once we've done this, you'll want to have your, your server password in. Uh, you'll be able to go over to create and from here it's going to bring up the installation. Now this won't take too long and you're going to see this pop up and it's just going to install it and once done we'll continue. I will mention for things like the IP on this, this is just a temporary uh, server I am going to remove this after uh, just for the purpose of showing you how to do this. Also you can click private, I should have mentioned that um, so that you can add a private password so that people can't randomly join. Once installed, your dedicated box will bring you over to the games server screen. Now, if you've just purchased a game server, all you need to do is go straight to game services and then to your server, which will be displayed on its own. So you can then click that and come to this screen. At this point, having a dedicated box server and just the game server, they work exactly the same. We have our IP address here, and then we also have the port numbers. Now the important port number to uh, know for ourselves is the query info one. So it's going to be 25,016. That is the IP that we're going to be using for our satisfactory game. Now, there are other things that we can talk about, such as the file manager, if you want to add the config file so that you can up the amount of players in, you can do that in here. There's also a way to add mods, though they're not currently supported, officially supported. Uh, this is something that we're going to be talking about in the near future. If I can get them running, I will uh, show you how we can do that. So the next thing that we're going to do is go and open up the game. Now I run through this, the mod manager. If you're running a dedicated server, you're not going to want to start the game with mods. So make sure they're turned off and also make sure that you're in early access or if you've selected the uh, experimental version, which I haven't done, uh, you will want to be on experimental. Anyway, we're going to start the game and then we'll be able to look at the server manager. So now that we're in satisfactory, we're going to go across to the server manager. And from here, we're going to add a server. Now I'm going to pull this across just so that you can see this. Um, it will, oh, it's gonna close. But we're going to take the IP address, which is this number here. We're going to pop that into here. And then we're also going to change the port number to the one that we saw straight after the query. Did I just do, let me just copy this. I haven't added the whole number. Make sure that you add the whole number. So here we are, we have uh, 125 at the end. And then we have our port number, which is this one. From here we can click confirm. Now this will come up with a admin uh, administrator password that you need to type in. But first of all, let's add a name. So now we're going to type in our password. And once you've entered it, you can now go across and either manage your saves. This will allow us to upload any of our saves directly to it. In fact, let's do that. We will uh, upload the basic save that we've just done for our recent Perfect Factory start. So as you can see, this is uploading. Thinking about it, if your save is using mods it might not load up. Uh, one thing to bear in mind. So we're just gonna restart this and then we're going to uh, pick a different save. So logging back on, you can see that we have this now saved. We're going to go back over to manage saves and we're going to load. Hmm. Just 
started. And there you go, instantly uploaded. From here, we're going to make sure that we have loaded this save. And then at this point, we can go across to status. And once it's loaded, this takes a while to, to first up load the save. But once this is sorted, we'll be able to join here. Alternatively, we can, can create a new game, but as we've got this, we're going to join and then it will take a few moments to load. And there you are. That is how you set up a server really easily on load.ms. Now, if you did find this video helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up. And if you do go down the route of purchasing a server, make sure to use my affiliate link and code. As a final note, I will be producing more guides on dedicated servers. And though the information should be transferable between all server providers, I cannot know how other providers run their platform. So if things are a little bit different or they don't offer the same service, I do apologize, but it's another reason to consider low.ms as you'll be getting a lot more out of these videos. Anyway guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching and as always thanks goes to our supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, as well as our Lunars, Dixie Chris, Lord of July and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, Ciao for now.